what is up? <laughs> We're cracking into something a bit different today. Um, I've had numerous people say to me, yeah, it's all well and good, you throwing up all these wacky, fancy schmancy freestyle videos, but we want to understand the basics and work up from there. You've been heard, okay? This is the start of a new series of videos on the Rope Rage channel in which we will discuss the bare bones basics of rope training. Everything from jumping technique to rotation to how you hold the rope to how you how you how you maintain a good posture and then we're going to work up to more advanced techniques um, picking up a bit more speed complicating our techniques a bit more and really have some fun with it so in this first video we're going to discuss something that is essential before anyone starts to train and this is deciding on the size of rope you should use. There are different methods for sizing the rope, which I'm going to touch on. And I'm also going to give some commentary, give some, give my verdict on these methods and what I think of them. And I'm also gonna give you the method that I use to size my rope. As I say, I'm, I'm pretty much self-taught. I've never had a, a jump rope coach or anything of that sort. So when you do things that way, you learn things differently from the norm. And so I think it'd be good for me to share my honest opinion on how I do things rather than copy and paste from elsewhere. Um, I'll let you know my method of sizing the rope. You're welcome to use it, take it with a pinch of salt, or if you think it's just garbage, that's fine too. But I'm gonna show it to you anyway, so you're stuck with it. Okay. Have I missed anything? Let's crack into it. All right, so the first and probably most popular option is to stand with one foot right in the middle of the rope cable and to hold the rope handles up towards your chest. What you're aiming for here is to have the end of the rope cable reach just below your pectoral muscles, um, the chest area. So yeah, this is probably the most popular way to size a rope. Um, but I just find it quite, I've always found it quite confusing as this position, holding the rope in this position is quite unnatural and it's not it doesn't really apply to any position you will have the rope in or you'll have the, your body in while you are training. So I'd rarely show anyone this method. It's good for reference, but I'd rarely show anyone this method because I just don't, I just don't see how it applies to active training. Second method is a bit more applicable to how you might train um, in that you'd have two feet on the rope and similar to the first instance you'd bring those rope handles together and hold them up towards your chest once again this is slightly better but again just holding the rope handles up to the chest has just never quite sat well with me and this is just my personal opinion okay so now i'm going to show you how i would tell you to size a rope um, what you want to do is stand with both feet together which is your neutral position when you're actively training and have that rope land just just at your toes just at the tips of your toes which is the path the rope will take when you're actively training and as you have that rope underneath you, the tips of your toes just pull on it a little bit and make sure you've got adequate tension going on there and rather than hold the handles up to your chest I'd say just hold them down to your hip bone area it's best to keep your handles around the hip bone vicinity obviously it won't be it won't be rigidly attached to that area because you need fluid motion but you want to keep it around that area and at this point i just say adjust the rope length according to the style of training you are going to be doing so i know crossfitters focus more on double unders than anything else when it comes to rope training 
So with the double under, because it's quite a repetitive technique and you need a good amount of speed on your rope, it will be best to go as short as is comfortable. Um, on the other hand, you have people who do a lot more of a boxing style with their training and they do a lot more crossing of the rope and such. Um, so for that, you want a bit more space inside your rope to move around and therefore you'd need your rope slightly longer. And really, as long as you're maintaining a good posture, upright, relaxed, the arms should be down by the sides, the elbows should point back, and the wrists should be around the hip area, then you're good to go. Hi, me again. I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know what you thought of it. Down in the comments section, I will find all your pleasant and not so pleasant comments there. So let me know what you um benefited from this video or if you just lost five i don't know how long this video is now let's say seven minutes of your life which you'll never get back and so despise me for it i guess i'd welcome that comment as well but thank you for watching please do let me know if there's anything else you want me to touch on in future any other videos in particular um the next video in this series, we're going to discuss your hand positioning, where you should focus on keeping your hands as you jump um, and why this can be beneficial in attaining the maximum potential of, of your rope training and also avoiding any nasty injuries. So that's it from me. I'm going to roll into a few out outtakes now. Um, I had a bit of fun recording this video in the park. Thanks for watching and all the best with your training. All the fundamentals. <clears throat> oh, here they go. Gotta love recording vids in the park. Dogs mating. It's a very pleasant sight. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. So this is gonna be his dogs the dogs are going at it again. Again. Wow. It's not even summer. It could they can't be on heat. Anyways. And now we are now we're going to school children, which is equally as pleasant. <laughs>